if you are suspected of check fraud and you tell a lie about what happened and the cops catch you on that almost immediately, you will be charged with check fraud. This is Jason Savill in the SeaTac Airport. I just finished up a call with a client working on a Title IX issue. And I'm headed to Anchorage, Alieska Resort, so that I can do an opening statements conference from the Trial Lawyers College, CN, Alaska. I am here in Alieska Resort at the Trial Lawyers College opening statement, CLE. As you can tell, there's a little bit of snow in Alaska, but not a lot. Working all day, now I'm going to look for some telly boots. Spent the last few days working on trial skills with some great public defenders and other lawyers from Pacific Northwest, Alaska, even one from Louisiana. Now, I get to do some skiing, a couple inches of fresh powder, Hey, I'm on the lift at Alieska, Alaska. After my conference on opening statement with Trial Lawyers College, check out that background, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, on the snowboard today, not mine, it's kind of fun. I'm gonna work on some motions this evening on the plane, back to work tomorrow. Today I'm working on uh, a domestic violence case and um, there's an allegation that my client hit a woman, um, his ex-wife, and uh, she also alleges that he um, would show up to her house and sit outside and otherwise terrorize her. And uh, those are essentially what she's trying to say he did. Um, now they have not been married for um, eight years or more. They have uh, four kids between them, and there's a custody battle going on right now where she wants to move out of state. She's wanted to move out of state for a long time, and she wants him to pay more money, and she doesn't want him to see the kids. And whenever he wants to see the kids, she makes various roadblocks so that he can't see the kids. And that's, that's what's been going on. The other thing that she sees is that, well, his business is taking off, and he's starting to make money in a way that he never made money before. And uh, that he has a girlfriend and that he's happy with. And that the kids starting are starting to like him. And finally, the other thing that's going on is that she took a child support check that was dated 2015, and she changed the five to a six. And deposited it again. And as that little problem started to catch up with her, she started making allegations against him. And he got sent to jail. And even though it was reported that she stole this check, she never got sent to jail. Even though the detectives that were investigating this check asked her, well, what can you tell me about that? And she didn't she refused to talk to them until after he was put in jail. But after he was put in jail, maybe two or three days, she called them up and gave a full interview. And what did she say? She said, I walked in after work one afternoon and found a boy who was staying at my house, not a child of mine, uh, was using my daughter's phone to deposit the check. I caught him in the act while he was doing it, and I tried to stop him, and I immediately emailed the owner of the check. She told this to the detectives, which is a fascinating story, and if it were true, it would make a lot of sense. But the detective looked at emails that he had already gotten from the person who owned the check and uh, knew that the email exchange between the two people wasn't for another couple of weeks. Um, that uh, and, and asked uh, 
the ex-wife about this. And the ex-wife said, oh, I, 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 I'm i sorry. This is literally seconds after she gave this first story. She tells a completely different story about how this person who was staying at her house, a juvenile, um, had deposited this check and what had happened with it. The detectives talked to the juvenile. The juvenile denied it and said, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, and meanwhile, the, the check wasn't going into his account, it was going into somebody else's account anyway. Um, so that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, and he has never been in trouble before in his life. Whereas, um, what's going on with this woman? Well, what I can say from my experience is this. If you are suspected of check fraud, and you tell a lie about what happened and the cops catch you on that almost immediately, you will be charged with check fraud. The lie proves the fraud in many ways. It did not work out that way in this case. Could it be because she could play victim and say, oh, my husband beats me? Oh, he stalks me? Yeah, that's how it can be. She still stole the money. She's still a liar. So if you don't ask, how can you determine whether somebody is consenting? Consent has to do with how the person responds to you. So keep an eye on it. 